Hi, I'm Al Balbasaro. And I'm Janine Nodder. And we're the co-hosts of Who's Looking Out For You. And today's show is about Mr. Smith Goes to Londonderry. Uh, yeah, it's, I, uh, you know, I was glad to see that he uh, was selected to be the town manager. And I finally, there's a town manager I can call that calls you back. And I'm kind of impressed with that there. Maybe we should introduce him here. Uh, Former gubernatorial candidate, um, Kevin Smith. Janine, welcome. thank Kevin, you. Welcome. It's nice to see both of you, and uh, Merry Christmas to both of you. Merry Christmas. You're mm -hmm. in red. I'm I'm in red. You're yeah, in green, green, and I yeah. kind of was hoping that you'd come in stripes. Yeah, and I'm wearing my Christmas tie here. Al's in the spirit. He's got the yeah, Christmas tie it. on. You no, know, Christmas in my family is a big thing. My father used to decorate the whole house, and we had a neighbor who was in contest with us. Yeah. And, Every Christmas, all the way up until the first week of January, our houses lit up the whole street growing <laughs> like up. Like in Home Improvement? Like in Home Improvement, yeah, that was my father. They God actually have him. a, I don't know if you've seen, there's a show on TV in these coming weeks to Christmas called the Great Christmas Light uh, Competition or something, where every week four homes across the country compete to see who can have the most wild display of Christmas lights. Right. And it's, uh, oh. I will tell you, the, the, the length some of these homes go to where it's computerized and synchronized mm -hmm. to music. Is yeah, I've, I've seen uh, the YouTube video yeah. of a house. It's incredible. Uh, the lights yeah, we, were synchronized. We have a home here in Londonderry every year. It never feels there. The yard, the home, everything is unbelievable. I think yeah. it's on Chase Road. Hmm. And people come from all over, drive to through see the it, road yeah. there to go see it and stuff right. there. But speaking we'll about Christmas, that. you know, a lot of people got their tax bills there. Yeah, you know, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, right? Merry Christmas, yeah. yeah. And I was at the town hall there a couple of days ago, last week there. To, I think it was the first day of December to pay my uh, car ins registration. Yeah. And I, a lot of people coming in there because you were closed on Friday, but paying them on that Monday, their taxes. Right. Right. Um, there are not a lot of smiling people when it comes to tax day. No, that's it's, that's true. And one of the things that we've been going through in this current budget, uh, getting ready for the fiscal year 15 budget. So right now we're in the fiscal year 14 budget, right. and you know with the the different calendars the town runs on there. You know, of course, you've got the the vote which happens in March. Uh, we're still in calendar year 13, but we're preparing fiscal year 15's right. yes, budget right. and one of the things we've been looking at is uh, putting together a, a town budget of course we only control the town side from where I uh, am uh, is keeping the tax rate flat uh, currently the town tax rate is at 519 and we're looking at coming in with a budget that would keep it at 519 uh, going into fiscal year uh, 15 mm -hmm. Um, well, be, because as as you say, it's you know the tax bills. We're well aware of when they come out. That's right. And uh, you know people are are feeling the crunch as it is as they get into the you know the holiday season and uh, as their heating bills go up because of the cold weather. And so uh, we want to make sure that we're also being fiscally prudent um, with uh, their tax bills as well. I had a guest on the show once, and I think it was Corey Lewandowski, where we had talked about that. Uh, the, you know how the tax bill when it comes and the we should um, put in a bill to change that and have it come later in the year. I've heard the proposals uh, to do that and, and whether or not that would you know, have an effect on how people uh, end up voting uh, is, you know, there's arguments for and against it, but uh, I've, I have heard that there's uh, proposals out there to think about changing when the tax bills come out. Well, Ooh. we know which party likes to give you a higher taxes, don't we? Well, we sure do. They're speaking about taxes there, you know, of course, there's a couple pieces of legislation there on the gas tax again. Yep. It's coming back to haunt us. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, uh, you know, the thing with, uh, of course, that particular proposal is the state proposal. Um, and uh, the idea behind it is to get more revenues to complete infrastructure projects uh, for the Department of Transportation. Uh, and one of those uh, projects that ex is still currently not funded is the I-93 uh, expansion, which mm -hmm. does affect Londonderry. Right. Um, and this isn't, I'm not making a case for or against a gas mm -hmm. tax, but just talking about the funding for uh, I-93. Uh, between exits three and five, mm -hmm. which right. is right at the heart of London, mm -hmm. is where it's not funded right now, currently to the tune of about $250 million. Right. Um, and that's, you know, it's, it's something obviously that um, hopefully they'll, one way or another, be able to fund it in the future because that has a big impact on people coming through town and also people coming into the state of New Hampshire, oh, mm -hmm. that they're able to mm -hmm. get through that corridor from the Massachusetts border all the way up through Manchester um, 
Otherwise, there's a disincentive to come up 93 if they know they're going to be sitting in traffic for hours. But cars like like a Prius, they're they're not going to be affected by the gas tax. The, the electric cars. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, you but, know that. And cars that do mm -hmm. use a lot That's of gas right. would be. Well, well you know, of yep. course, we live in a uh, town there where a lot of our residents drive into Boston yep. and other areas there for work. Right. And this, this here gas tax, of course, takes food off our tables. I don't know if you're aware that the 18 cents tax that we have in place now mm -hmm. gets siphoned off in different directions, mm -hmm. and which is a shame. Mm -hmm. I would support a gas tax if I knew that that 100% of that gas, 18 cents now was going to the road tax. Yeah. And if you remember the big dig, federal government kicked in because 93 is a federal uh, road. Right. Okay, the federal right. government should be kicking in more money. And with the money that we just received, which helped us on the 93 expansion, we can't get it all done at once. There's just no way. Mm -hmm. So it has to be piecemeal. Right. So I'm hoping between uh, senators and Congress people that they kick get in and kick in more but, money in the transportation bill. But the government has no money. They're already $17 trillion in debt. Well, they are, but they also collect the gas tax. That has nothing to do with that deficit on the gas tax that the federal government's collecting. Well, and, and they share the wealth throughout the country. And that's what we pay you guys a big bucks for, is to figure that oh, out yeah. for right. us on yeah. the state level. Right. Uh, so that, mm -hmm. um, you We know. want a fair shot of the gas tax that's being paid to the federal government. We want more of that money coming back, like Boston, the big mm -hmm. dig. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. You know, where that started, what, at a three I don't know, and exploded. I think the original price tag had it under, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it's. it ended up being like 10 times the amount oh, that they Oh, everything is. And they always it say gonna it's going to cost this much, and everything costs more. Right. Yeah. And, and it usually takes a lot longer, mm -hmm. too. Right. Well, you know, the, the toll tax just isn't fair. There's 27 ways to get on the Everett Turnpike, and only Merrimack has to pay to go in and out. And it, and when the town made the deal with the devil back in 84, I have all, I have all that wording on my iPad. I got the copies I snapped pictures of it so I have it <laughs> so I know what <laughs> happened back in 84 and 85 and of course if you use the airport access road you bypass the tolls in in right. both directions well yeah but that does, still doesn't affect Merrimack I know Merrimack can't it, it doesn't anywhere. help you guys in right. Merrimack mm -hmm. but you know I'm just making the point that if you but, but it will never be paid off because of the no. interest never mm -hmm. which means that that town is in in chains so to speak. Know, speaking about stuff that's not being paid off there, I don't know if you're aware, like my our town here, uh, we probably got about $18 million in debt in the school side, maybe about 18, 19 on the town mm -hmm. side. And, you know, and I wanted to slide right into the TIF there because mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of I people around that have some concerns on this here. And I know you keep saying it's tax neutral. But there's a lot of, maybe you can explain sure. a little bit about yeah. this. Yeah, I mean, so the, the TIF is, of course, a tax uh, increment financing district, uh, which means that if you were to have a, uh, a bond, a public bond in a uh, TIF-designated district, uh, approximately 80% of every dollar goes towards paying down the cost of that bond as opposed to going into all the revenue going into the general fund. Any revenues that come in, from business that move in there would go mostly towards paying down the bond rather than going to the, uh, the general fund. Now, uh, what the town council has said is that uh, they would not support floating a bond uh, to pay for Pettengill Road in that area unless there was already okay. enough revenue in place that could cover the cost of paying down that bond in year one mm -hmm. such that it did not negatively impact uh, the tax rate. So in other words, it would have to be already enough incremental tax revenue in that district coming in that would cover the cost of uh, whatever the bond ended up being beginning in year one. Otherwise, uh, if it doesn't, then that does affect the tax rate. It increases right. the tax rate. Um, and so they've, you know, they've uh, been very diligent in saying that, you know, they're, they're not going to uh, entertain it unless they see that the revenue's there, um, which is why, uh, I, you know, why you're not going to be seeing mm -hmm. a bond on this particular ballot coming up in March um, for Pettengill, um, because right now they know that the revenue wouldn't be there to cover it. Oh, okay. um, so, uh, because <clears throat> the bond hearing, to have a, a, a bond on the Warren article, you have to have a public hearing uh, for it within a certain amount. And there's certain dates you have to meet before everything goes on the ballot in March. Uh, and if they were going to have a bond, they would have already had to have put notice out for that public right. hearing. 
Uh, and so right now they're going forward without having a bond on right. that. Well, of course, in the future, one of my concerns was with the TIF, you know what I mean, on how they designed this area. Yeah. And if you look and they designed it around the, mm -hmm. um, oh, turn it yeah, this way. around the airport. Yep. Uh, and now the other properties. So that means that property that's already in place, already has infrastructure there, yep. that the town would not reap the benefits, the taxpayers, to get a tax break because that money would go to pay for the that bond if we ever do it. Uh, I'm just trying to understand what you're saying. Is, what I'm saying one more is, time? here is Pettengill. Yep. Okay. Now the TIF, the district that you're doing, takes all this area here. Yep. And all this, this is the land that's around the pet and deal right. here yep. that they'll build out. Right. But the property that's here, they're yeah. going to take the tax money from to support here. Only, yeah. only tax revenue that would come on top of what's already there. The tax revenue that the town's already getting from there mm -hmm. stays in the general fund. That does not go. What about the empty lots that are already there with infrastructure already placed yep. and paid for? That, uh, any tax money the town's currently getting off of those properties and the infrastructure mm -hmm. does not go towards the TIF. Okay, that, so that stays in the general fund, right. stays, stays on the town side. What would change, Al, is if, if on one of these vacant lots mm -hmm. up here you had new construction up there, that would then go towards paying down any bond that was right. floated in that district because that would be new revenue mm -hmm that would be coming in after they designated it. But anything that's there now, it stays there. It, right. it stays in now the general Now, these other fund. areas, we've already paid for the roads and everything else going through that's there. Right. And, and that's why my concern was on these other properties. Why wouldn't that money still go to schools and go to other things versus paying for that? Yeah. That's, you know what I mean? Sure. That's what we no, and, and I, yeah. have concerns on, sure. on that money there. Right. And, and I think that's, it, and it's important to know that that current money that's there stays mm -hmm going towards the right. school, stays going towards uh, the general fund. Kind of the idea of expanding that zone there was obviously the larger the zone, the more revenue you're capturing right. in the future that can go towards paying down uh, the bond if there was a bond uh, to, to build Pettengill Road. And I should mention that, you know, it's, I think it's important in any kind of project like this that you think outside the box too and not just think about public financing. Um, and, and I think the council has been very clear that we want private buy-in as well, right. um, because you have private uh, buy-in, right? Private buy-in. It, it should really be a public-private partnership, because this is going to benefit benefit private development, which in turn in the future benefits uh, the town, because the town mm -hmm. is going to reap that tax revenue that you have from private business coming in. Um, but really, it's it can be a win-win for both. But I think they both got to make an, an investment there. They both have to, uh, you know, buy in as opposed to just mm -hmm. the town uh, funding all of it. Right. Um, just for clarification for the viewers, you were saying TIF, and you used the term TIF several times. Can you just define that one more time? Yep. Uh, TIF stands for Tax Increment Financing. Increment mm -hmm. Financing. Yeah. Okay. Well, yep. that's good to know then they're not going to do the bond right now because no. we still have a lot of people that are hurt and with two paychecks and everything. Yeah, and what I said, Al, was that uh, there was, in fact, there was an article recently in the Londonderry Times that looked at the outstanding debt that the town and school currently have and, you know, was asked what, what my opinion on it was. And basically what I said is that, I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's up to the voters to decide how much uh, debt they want to incur as a town. Uh, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you're being financially responsible because, obviously, if you... If you take on too much debt, it can negatively impact your sure. bond rating. Londonderry has a very uh, favorable bond rating right now um, in terms of uh, you know the interest rates that we're able to get because of that. So we want to make sure that we keep that good bond rating, and, and part of doing that means keeping our debt uh, low. Well, I don't know how your town is, or your town manager here, yeah, but I've been around I wish talking. We had to Kevin. I've been talking <laughs> to some business owners here, and they, they're shocked to see that a town manager walks in and says, hey, I'm here from the government. How can I, I help? Well, I, I, can I, I tell help? you, I, and, uh, I, love, I love doing that. Yeah. And, uh, Do I, you really say that? I'm here from no, the government. No, you don't, but I'm just no, going I, in You know there. what? I, I, he goes out. It's, it's, uh, I forget what. So what the rumor they, is true then. You are going out to businesses, what people are telling me? Oh, yeah. Owners? Oh, yeah. No, I've been to, mm -hmm. gosh, uh, you know, over probably two dozen businesses at this point going in. And I mean, I've, I've been to a lot more business than that, but actually going in, meeting the owners, talking to them and giving them my card and saying, 
if you're having problems on the town level, call, call me directly. You know, call Town Hall, come see me directly because we want to know what we can do to make your life easier as a business owner in the town of Londonderry. That's how you retain business in town. Right. To me, that's how you attract businesses to come in. Word of mouth gets around that. Boy, Londonderry is a good town to work with. You know, the, the staff is easy to work with. Uh, they, they're diligent in the work that they do. They get it done quickly. Um, and that's, you know, every business owner expects that there's going to be uh, if they're expanding a business or starting a business, you know, there's boxes you have to check off. But I think they also expect some help in doing that, you know, and not just being feeling like they're hitting roadblocks all the time or they're being left out on their own. Um, and that's what we've tried to do in town hall is to make their lives easier to say, okay, we'll help you through this process. We'll show you what it is that you need to do. Uh, and at the same time, reviewing our own internal processes to saying, how can we make ourselves more efficient? How can we make ourselves more user friendly? And again, uh, you know, to me, that is a great marketing tool um, when you're trying to attract business to town. We have a new brewery, uh, as you know, Al, that right. you and I both visited, the 603 Brewery. And where's that at? That's uh, on Liberty Drive, up by Exit 5. Um, they moved down from Campton, New Hampshire. Um, they, uh, the owners live in Derry, so they wanted a place that was a little closer to where they were, but also they needed a larger facility. And uh, so they settled on London Derry, and it was great to go in there and talk to them and say, you know, how was your experience in dealing with the town? And to hear them say, right. it was wonderful. You know, the staff was great. Uh, you know, anytime they had questions, they got them answered right away. And um, that's what we want to hear. We want to hear that businesses find working in Londonderry is a, is a good place to be. We, we have a brewery in Merrimack, too. I know you do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, it's a little bit larger yeah, a little brewery. Larger, that's right. Uh, they got some nice horses uh -huh. there. And, and you got yeah. some nice horses, too. Yeah. That's right. Well, this, then, one, this one here, of course, is a home, you know, a, kind of small yeah. mom and pop shop there. Two guys and a, you know, and what, a wife yep. there, the, the, the ownership. So it's a little bit more. Variety's good. Yeah. It is. Well, it's, it's part of the growing craft beer industry. New Hampshire's got a, a real, New Hampshire and Vermont both have a, a thriving craft beer industry that continues mm. to grow in both of these states. And, um, you know, it's, and, and when I was running for governor, I ran into that a lot. It's, it's really a growing industry. Right. And a lot of people are very much into craft beers. They don't always... You know, I know Anheuser Busch. They were they're the big giant, mm -hmm. but people like very you know other oh, kinds yeah. of flavors. And, and that's right. I mean, right. we have a great company that moved uh, that came in here a few years ago, Meadery. Yeah, and, Moonlight uh, Meadery. Yeah, Blue Light Meadery, and they've done a great job, and people just love it. And they're all they're always in the shopping center. Yeah. Uh, but I I wanted to bring that up because uh, some of the business people that told me you were showing up, yeah. I thought it was great to see, you know, not just the legislature but the town manager yeah. getting out and about. Yeah. and seen in there. We've never really uh, had that. At least, I don't think we have that I've seen. I've never heard of it. Yeah. So well, that's, that's awesome. You know, like I said, it's, it's something I really mm -hmm. enjoy doing because you can't, uh, it's, you don't ever want to balance your taxes on the backs of the property taxpayers. Uh, and so you need a good mix of both residential taxpayers, but also commercial and industry right. uh, in town as well. And Londonderry has so much opportunity in the way of that between its its quarters along 102 and up 28 by exit 5 and now up by the airport area. Um, yesterday I was taking a tour of uh, Kluber Lubrication, uh, which is a German-based company um, that's located up right by the airport. They only have two facilities in the U.S., one in Texas mm -hmm. and one in Londonderry, New Hampshire. Um, and they, they love being there. They're thinking about actually expanding uh, perhaps in the, the near future. And I told them, that's great. We want you to expand right. Londonderry. Mm -hmm. We want you to stay here. So, you know, let us know ahead of time the kind of the plans you're going to be looking at because we want to make sure we can accommodate you the best you can. But, you know, this is a, a manufacturing company. They make over 3,000 varieties of lubricants for, for all different industries, marine oh, industry, right. the, the aviation industry to medical offices, it's incredible. You go into their facilities, you just see barrels and barrels of different kinds of lubricants uh, in, this, uh, in their facility. Um, but it's, it's all being done right here in Londonderry. Um, and, and so you've got that kind of industry up by the airport. As I said, you've got a lot of great retail along 102 and 28. Um, there's gonna be a new travel plaza going in uh, off of exit five, because that area is now starting. 
and that again goes back to this the whole widening of 93 is now that that whole interchange has been reworked and done over it's a lot more conducive now for uh, new industry to be going in there uh, so it's these are I think these are very exciting times uh, for the town and and if we do things right we can bring in a lot more industry keep the tax rate low but enjoy the same quality of life that Londonderry has always had you know my parents they moved here in 86 because of the quality of life from Massachusetts uh, I was born and raised in, in Winchester, Mass, oh, until... Okay. I used uh, to live in Winchester. Yeah. I had an apartment there. Oh, really? As a Marine recruiter. You know the Half Shape Moon there? Yes. Condos? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine owns a condo there, and I was there, lived there as a Marine recruiter. No Met kidding. Back in 1983 to 86. Wow, no 80, kidding. 83 to 84. I was there for a year. Then I moved to Malden by the palace. Okay, sure. So it was nicer yeah. over there. Yeah. Did you go to Londonderry High School? I did. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, Londonderry's got, and my wife, of course, went here as well, and her parents still live in town. Uh, it, so there's a, a Your great- Your parents, too, still yeah, live in town. Yeah, they're still in town as well. Okay. There's a great quality of life mm -hmm. here, and people love the fact. What I think is great about Londonderry is you go through the center of town, and you see all the apple orchards, the farming, and it's, you know, very, looks, there's still elements that are what Londonderry was 50 years ago. But then you can go right up by the airport and suddenly, you know, you see all this industry. And a lot of people don't realize, too, is, you know, the airport, 75% of the airport is in Londonderry. Right. Um, it's, of course, owned by the city of Manchester, but the mm -hmm. land is in Londonderry. So all of that business and industry that's popping up around there, that's uh, tax revenue that's coming into the yeah. town of London. Do you know I can lay in my bed, open up my sliding glass doors, and watch the planes come down High Ridge Road? No kidding. And uh, land at the air, you know, go into the airport area there. Yeah. But he brought something up there about uh, what is Londonderry, uh, you know, was. And it w now let's take it to the future, what's going on with, like, Talk Woodmark. about potato. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a First touchy, touchy. potato ever planted in the United States. Yes, I know. Londonderry, I, New I, Hampshire. John Stephen uh, told that story when he, when he was running yeah. for, for governor the term before you ran. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that it's now the state, what is it, the state veggie? I, I, yes. no, I, I voted I, against I, it. But yeah, I, I did <laughs> too. I voted against it. <laughs> and the reason I did, because many, many years ago they took the potato and went to Ohio. Right. They stopped oh, going I, and they stopped doing it. No, it's Idaho. 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 Okay, yeah. So, you Idaho. know, there That's was right. there was rumor of a Yukon Gold Amendment, but that never surfaced. So <laughs> we had right. this potato, and I'm so, like, okay, so we're going to copy Idaho. Okay, uh, granted, yes, the first potato when America was planted in Londonderry. I know uh -huh. the story, but uh, these every year these kids have all these bills, and we're going to pass all of them? I vote no on most of them. But, you know, it's yeah. nice to see the kids step up. And I tell all the kids that come up to the school, I meet every kid that goes up, every fourth grader. Or I, I try, I try to. to meet them yeah. all, too. And I tell them all the time, if you have an idea, don't think it's a stupid idea. Do your it'll, research. It'll go through the process. Email me. I'll come in and we'll debate it. And then if I think it's, you know, something that we need to move forward or we don't have, then we'll make it happen. Yeah. But they also yeah. learn disappointment because a lot of the, the, the bills don't, their bills don't always pass. That's right. So they learn, yep. they learn the lesson that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, and the bigger takeaway for them, I think, is, is the process. Seeing the pro, even though their bill may not pass, is seeing, being a part of that process. There's no substitute for that. You know, when I served in the House, I was 19 at the time and it was just starting my first years of college and taking poli-sci classes and it's one thing to sit in a classroom and take classes to learn about political science. It's another thing to actually be a part of the process. There's just no substitute. Oh, uh, uh, just one. one no, yeah. those kids lobbied that potato. They all mm -hmm. had T-shirts. Right. I passed them yes, in the hall, did. and they kind of went, getting oh, smart. Mm -hmm. voting getting no smart. against your bill, but I like no. your T-shirt. Mm -hmm. Where do you see Londonderry tomorrow with this uh, Woodmont and other th you know, yeah. things <coughs> going on here? It's um, well, that you know, going back to what I was saying about the, I think the future is very exciting. Is you've got so the the three major. Uh, let me back up. Business New Hampshire magazine recently had a, a great piece on Londonderry, and it, it asked, the headline was, is Londonderry the next P's, is what it, the question it asked. And if you read the article, it talks about how Londonderry really is ground zero for economic development over the next decade in northern New England. Um, that it's poised, it's poised mm -hmm. to see potentially two of the largest economic developments uh, in, in northern New England. One of them being the Pentonville Road areas we talked about in, in the development up by the airport. But the other part is the, the Woodmont Commons uh, project that's recently been approved. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 600 plus acres uh, of 
uh, residential, commercial, uh, industry, office space, retail, mm -hmm. restaurants, uh, really the first of its kind in New Hampshire, if not uh, in New England. It's a, it's a planned unit development, a PUD, similar, similar to uh, these kind of walking communities that you would see right. more in uh, southern states. Well, I own a, well, I don't, but we have a family home in Mashpee. Yep. And I spend a lot of time at the uh, Mashpee Commons that they built. Sure. And you walk around to the stores and then you can sit down outside and eat at the restaurant. Oh, they got music at night. Yep. Uh, yeah. But on this project itself, I've gotten a lot of phone calls on it. Mm -hmm. But everyone that calls me, I said, it's a constitutional issue. It's a private property rights issue. If it you is. don't like it, buy the land then. Yeah. So nobody builds. Well, I mean, you gotta you gotta remember that if you look at um, the farms in Londonderry, you know, Londonderry still has four working apple That's orchards. Right. Woodmont made five until uh, they sold it, um, and, and so on some of those orchards, Londonderry has easements and has the development rights. So that if those farms ever sell in the future, Londonderry will will have a say over what happens there. It didn't have that on Woodmont, and so it was a, a private entity making an agreement with another uh, private mm -hmm. developer. That being said, there was a, a three-year long process that Woodmont Commons had to go through with the planning board and with the community uh, to finally come up with a master plan that was approved uh, this, this past September uh, going forward for them. So it, there's been a, a tremendous amount of work done uh, on this project to make sure that it, it integrates well with the community going forward. I mean, this is a, a project that's a 20-year build-out, $1 billion uh, in total when it's all said and done. I'll be shocked if it's 20. I bet they'll be done a lot earlier. You think so? I think so, well, because if you got that much money tied up, yeah. you want to reap your... you got to remember, too, that, and part of that will be driven by, uh, you know, the planning board and that process. Right. And the planning board has uh, discretion because it's a PUD. They have discretion over the uh, the build out of the project and so they're going to make sure that um, it, if you London Air, if you remember in the from the mid 80s to the mid 90s saw a tremendous amount it, it exploded in that decade uh, tremendous amount of uh, commercial development residential it wasn't prepared for it at the time it didn't have uh, the proper zoning in right. place and and so a lot of it just all came at once and then the town officials at the end said, okay, wait a minute, we've got to put a whole, we've got to catch up. We've got, our infrastructure has to catch up, our schools have to catch up to where we're, we're meeting the demand. Right. I think the town has done a very good job now of, of doing its due diligence and making sure that it is prepared to meet these kind of projects going forward. And um, we'll make sure that it, it grows mm -hmm. appropriately right. and that, uh, you know, that they're, they're expanding when the town's ready for them uh, uh, to expand. So it's, uh, you know, as I said, a lot of work went into this, and, and I think it's going to be handled very carefully as it uh, starts to go forward. My understanding is that there's uh, an agreement within the developer agreement or within the master plan that they have to give an update to the planning board after the new year on kind of where things stand and right. what their time frame mm -hmm. is to start bringing in their uh, first site plans. My opinion, Al, is I think uh, long term it's going to be a, a you know a net benefit to the town um, to have mm -hmm. this kind of development oh, here. Time, yeah. I mean, I, I hear from people who mm -hmm. are who are homeowner who have been longtime homeowners in Londonderry who are looking to downsize, and but wanted to stay in Londonderry and weren't right. sure they're going to be able to, and love the idea of this community going in mm -hmm. because that's where they want to go. And I think you'll see senior citizens living there. I think you'll see young people, college students living there. Um, and I think you'll see people raising their families. And uh, I like the idea about community. the hotel and the little matter. Of course, we have the um, Elliot right. across the street, you yep. know, not too far from there. Yep. But I mean, I, uh, the concept there is good. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the concept. Right. And this is why many of the people that don't like it have to understand, buy the property then. Uh, if you live next door to a piece of property mm -hmm. and so you bought it and it's all treed, mm -hmm. somebody owns that property. Mm -hmm. Eventually, mm -hmm. somebody's going to build. Mm -hmm. And they take the trees down. That's right. And they yeah. take the trees down and everything else. So you can't yep. use that as a reason to fight something. Sure. Because unless you buy that property and stop it. Yeah. And you got to remember, too, I mean, there is, I mean, that apple orchard's been there, gosh, you know, f forever, it seems. And 
Uh, we all hate to see it go. Yeah, and by, but mm -hmm. built into the planning board made sure that built into the design of the whole project will be uh, a buffer of the apple right. trees that you know go around um, you know almost the entire property mm -hmm. uh, so that there's you know a, a piece of Londonderry is you know Woodbond Orchard is still right. um, there in that that community again it's I, I think the planning board did a tremendous amount of work of making sure I mean this was such a huge project potentially the biggest one the town's ever had right. And, and that's why it took three years, is this mm -hmm. wasn't done just overnight and, and kind of willy-nilly. Right. A lot of work went into it to making sure that this fits in to the design and carry going forward. Um, and I, I think it's, I, as I said, I think it's going to be a great benefit for the well, town. You have, you have somebody like Art Rudd that's been on there for years, and right. Laura, right. El Elzeem, and, um, you know, Mary Soares. And they're always asking them tough questions. Sure they are. Tom Frieda, yeah. which is nice, you know, to they hold are. them accountable to make sure that they're complying with the zoning. Yep. You go they through are. that in your town, Merrimack, with any big build-up projects and oh, stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, actually, when you were saying about the trees around surrounding the property, there's two houses out right off the top of my head that I thought of. Uh, when they put in the Walgreens over by exit 12, mm -hmm. uh, there's a house behind it. They have no uh, privacy at all. You can, When they're on their deck, everyone driving by will see them. Mm -hmm. And when they built the middle school, they took down all the trees to put in the road, and they took all the trees down. So there's one house, that you, no privacy. Their whole backyard is, is wide open. Right. Everyone can see. Yeah, and that's, you know, the, the important thing is that you, you want a good balance between, you, you don't want to make the process so difficult for developers that they never want to go into your town because they think, oh my gosh, I'm going to have so many headaches. At the same time, you want to make sure that you're protecting the citizens of the town as well. Right. Um, with what it is a developer is proposing and that's why you have certain ordinances you have certain zoning requirements mm -hmm. and that's why you go through the process but of sometimes they can change the zoning requirements they can. You know, like that's what happened in Merrimack when they wanted the, to build the outlet malls and I was one of the people that fought the outlet malls it's in my backyard for one thing <laughs> but um, by the way I love going to them yeah, do, yeah? well oh, yeah, thank I you I I love love I'm spending some money in Merrimack that's right so you I can do, at least I'm take guilty too, some so. consolation in that mm -hmm. no no they are nice it's nice now but my biggest concern besides it being in my backyard that wasn't my biggest concern what is is there um, is a protected supposed to be protected wellhead up there on that property mm -hmm. uh, that serves 60 percent of Merrimack and they let them blast with the dirty stuff mm -hmm. and the amount of granite that they blast if they put it into dump trucks and line them up it would it would um, stretch all the way to New York City and halfway back Wow so yeah so I learned a lot mm -hmm. about that and about that it, it's a big piece of granite so there right. were earthquakes every day every yeah. day yeah. and no, I worried about all houses and, and um, look at it now, the cracks and foundations so but it mm -hmm. now that it's all said and done you know it is nice and how um, much money does that bring into Merrimack uh, that do you know that uh, whole area that they built out well well I don't know because that that was another thing I, w I was arguing when they were building it because they were saying oh tax revenue tax revenue I said really okay well we have to have more policemen now because there's going to be more crime and, and, and uh, you know there's costs that go up and then they want a new fire station mm -hmm. which they didn't get but there's well, costs that go into it as well. Well, and I'll, you know, on that issue, Al, if you look at the comparable towns in the area, whether it be, um, you know, Derry or Merrimack and Windham, and compare the tax rates, Londonderry's below all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, for a, a town the size of Londonderry and the services that it has and the, the amount of schools that it has, um, to keep, to, for its tax rate, and, and granted, it may not be a lot of comfort to people who are getting their tax bills right around this time and they see that they went up. If you comparatively look at the surrounding communities, right. London is still the lowest. Uh, it's, it's very, very high. Much mm -hmm. lower than, than Derry. Right. You look at all the industry Derry mm -hmm. has, but their tax rate is, I think, almost five or six dollars higher per thousand than, mm -hmm. than what London Derry is. Uh, another important component of the developer's agreement on Woodmont that I did want to bring up is uh, it was written into the developer's agreement that uh, Woodmont has to keep the town revenue uh, positive That's right. for the 20-year the mm -hmm. build-out yeah. of this project. So any impact that they're mm -hmm. going to have uh, you know, in, in the different uh, aspects of the community, they have to keep the community right. revenue positive, which I, I think mm -hmm. was a very important provision that was right. written into that. Well, you know, if we stay, f hopefully we'll stay focused here because you always hear the police and fire, well, we need more, we need more. Mm -hmm. But if you take a look at Mashby Commons and other, they didn't hire more police. Mm -hmm. They hired the company hired security mm -hmm. for their areas. 
you know, to maintain. And then, if, of course, if there was a crime that committed, the police would go there just like they do any other business or home in the, in the, in the town. Speaking of crime, um, it's the holiday, it's Christmas season. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People are Christmas shopping. They're not shopping for anything else right now. Hanukkah's over. <laughs> Nobody buys presents for New Year's. When you're Christmas shopping, um, just be um, uh, warned that, that when you take the packages to the car and then you leave the car and go shopping some more, there might be some bad guys watching. There have been some break-ins, people breaking into cars. They Is watch that going them. on yes. over at the Merrimack? Yes. Are they have so camera Did they put cameras up in those lots? Or? Probably. You know, because, uh, I mean, that's a win-win. But, but just think, be um, warned, you know, right. just use caution. If yeah. you're going to put your packages in the car and you have more shopping to do, maybe it's a smart idea to move your car to another huh. another part. Huh. It's probably good advice. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. So that's what I did when I go. It doesn't matter, not just there, but anywhere. I don't need to drive. I live right there. I can just walk. I yeah. like running up that hill. So. You know I'll tell you, I, I'm <laughs> convinced that I can actually see my house from a certain angle. Uh, from uh, from the outlets because it's so you can see over the river and it's into a beautiful Litchfield view and, up yeah, there. It is. it is. It's gorgeous view up there. Oh yeah, yeah it is. Not, they did a great job. I mean, even you know, it's like, but the it's way pretty, it's set, it's set out in the back there. It's yeah. not set out in the main road. Just like the Walmart, I was impressed with the Walmart in Derry, yep. how it sits yep. way they in the back. back. But the GPS know, is still wrong. I still have people coming down mm -hmm. my street and, yeah. and where's the mall? Mm -hmm. I'm like. Well, this is obviously a residential neighborhood. The mall is there, and you can't get to it. So then I send them back on the highway, because then they can pay a toll again. Uh -huh. Well, you yeah. know, with all yeah. this stuff being coming forward, uh, I mean, we got to get down to real facts now on the legislative mm -hmm. issue that we have on why London, Harvey Road, Pettengill has been like that for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. We still have a lot of empty lots on Harvey Road. As a legislators, we know the issue with the PUC, the Public Utilities Commission, yep. On our, on our electricity. Right. Okay, that uh, we're yeah, the that's highest true. in the country, or one of the highest, yep. I think yes. the third largest. Yep. And I've talked with businesses that come in up at the State House and other areas, and they'll say straight up, your electricity is too high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had the forum with the governor that time, yep. I was there with you there, and, uh, and I put the governor on pretty much on the spot, said, Governor, why don't you talk to the PUC to get them to do something on dropping electric rates? Until mm -hmm. we do that, you could build it. They're not coming. Mm -hmm. You're going to trickle in. Yeah, That's our problem. And we keep hearing this, and we have right. to figure out a way to build competition within the energy. Right. Well, you know, it's so one of the things that I have found, so I've, I've had the benefit now of working on the federal level, the state level, and, and now the local level. And each level has a, a, a part in the process. Right. To, make, to really determine whether or not businesses are going to want to do business uh, in your state. Um, and this is, this is a state problem, not right. a town not a problem. Town. And we have to try our day. We do. It. And, and it's one of the things that I heard con continuously when I was campaigning last year was, you know, New Hampshire, really New England, has not made itself competitive in the energy market. And, and it hurts us with attracting good manufacturing jobs right. into the state. See, I, I feel like if manufacturing is going to move to New Hampshire, I can make a great case for why they should come to Londonderry because of all of the outstanding uh, land opportunities that we have. But that being said, we've got to get them looking at New Hampshire first. Uh, and, and something has to be done to figure out how we can make ourselves uh, more energy uh, efficient. Um, and it, it, the whole the regulatory system, everything needs to be looked at soup to nuts to say, okay, what is what is really driving the cause of the high rates uh, in, in our state and in the region? Um, granted, we don't have some of the natural resources that other states like Pennsylvania has or even Alaska, which has uh, all of the oil. Um, but that being said, there's got to be more that we can do to make ourselves. Mm -hmm. And again, this is something you all are going to need to figure out in Concord is, right. How do we make ourselves more competitive in that market? Um, because it is, you know, any kind of industry that uses a lot of energy, we're going to be hard pressed to get them here to New mm -hmm. Hampshire when they look and, at and what, know this. what the and cost is of, right. of doing business mm -hmm. here from that perspective. I was at a party last week and there was a group of people I went over to say hello to and they said, we've got to get right to work in New Hampshire. And I'm mm -hmm. like, 
you know, we, we tried. We tried. It, it would bring more mm -hmm. more business here. Maybe maybe we could try it again and exempt the policemen and firemen. I think maybe that might be a road to go to keep the police and fire out of it. And uh, you know, maybe that might work. Mm -hmm. But we need a Republican governor in a row, and that's something that's you know not involved with. Yeah, no any, any I'm Republican not. Republican House and Senate. I, I made a, a yeah. commitment when I came right. here that my commitment was going to be to the mm -hmm. town of Londonderry and that I, w I was stepping back from the political process for a while. And uh, and so I'm, I'm committed to Londonderry. Well, and you remember when you ran for um, for governor and you were on my show a few times yep. and you, you talked about this um, small business called Breakwin Farm? Yes, I do, I do recall that. I right. met them. <laughs> you did meet them. Good. How them are they doing? They're, they're fine. It was uh, at... The, what do you call that on Saturday when they meet? This is before the, the farmers, farmers market. Farmers market, yeah. And I, I walked by and I turned around and went, Breakwind Farm, Break you farm. are for yeah. real. Organic beans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't making it up. Well, you know, as and much I as I have to they say. They like you. They like you. Uh, Y'all loss as a governor is Londonderry's gain to have well, you as the conservative that. as the town manager looking that. out for the pocketbooks of all Londonderry and the growth, of course. Yeah. You know, we want to see it grow, but we, uh, of course, me being a conservative, want to see us pay off some debt right. from school and town yeah. before we borrow more money. You know, it, I've, I've told a number of people this. It was never my thought to be a town manager. Um, but when this opportunity came along and I saw it, having grown up here, knowing the community so well, knowing the amount of potential it has going forward, uh, it just seemed like a, 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 a great thing and something that I felt very passionate about wanting to do. And, uh, I will tell you, I, I've been on the job now a little over four months, um, and it's been it's been wonderful. It's been tremendous. Uh, the staff has been great to work with. Well, they seem to be uh, smiling more. I see. Well, I, <laughs> you, you, know, you know, it's I, I'm in and out of the town hall, as you yeah. notice. Well, they, they see <laughs> you, you know, they do. Smile. Yeah, no, they I I, I talk with people, and uh, yeah, no, they seem to be more happier, and well, you know, and they're happier with you there, and they make you're making a difference. I want your head to swell, by the way. <laughs> well, thank, thanks for your parents, by the way. Oh, the better half. Probably. Yeah, Sue um, at home. I have a lot to thank Susie. my parents yeah. for, yeah. Thank uh, you. and and Susie as well. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, they're they do their jobs very well, and and they take a lot of pride in the work that they do and um, you know we're all on the same page and the, that page is how can we best serve serve right. the customer and the customer mm -hmm. there are residents in town there are business owners in town um, and, and anyone that that does uh, business with the with the town of Londonderry um, and, we, and we're committed to making it um, you know the, the best town that it can be Londonderry in fact uh, I don't know if you saw the Derry News um, this week but uh, there's a headline on the front and I think it says something to the effect of Londonderry's feeling the love and it was about a, sur a recent survey that came out that ranked all of the towns uh, for the most family friendly towns to live in in New Hampshire. Londonderry was in the top 10 it made number nine in fact wow. I think it was the, the top town of any of the towns in the uh, surrounding community here. Um, you know, I think it should have been further down towards right. number one on the list. Where um, was Merrimack on that list? I don't recall where Merrimack was. It, it, it wasn't, uh, I don't think it was in uh -huh. the top we, ten. We were in a, we were something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best places right, to live checking. in America. Merrimack possibly, made the list. Possibly, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Merrimack's, you no, know, no, I have no, that's anything. awesome. Yeah. We, we are very family friendly. We, I mean, when you see a function at the school, right. the, the pocket lot's packed. It is. Moms yep. and dads involved at the school. That's why we got to get rid of Common Core. I know that's not your oh, area. Yeah. Yes. You know yeah, what I mean? We are fighting Common that's Core. That's conquered again. Mm. Right. We are fortunate to have well, moms Manchester and dads. Well, Manchester and Alton, they're on the right, right. track. Boy, and Manchester's mm -hmm. lucky to have right. Mayor Gastis. I mean, that's he not your area. And we know that. But, spoke uh, for them. I just had to throw that in because I, 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 I co sponsored legislation to stop it. Me in the too. State of New yes. Um, you, Jane yeah. Cormier's yes. bill? Yes, yes. we're co sponsors oh, that's for right. that. We are. Oh, I had, was going to ask you do you have your, are you looking at any legislation this coming year? We go back to work on January 8th. Do you have your eye on anything? Yeah, you know, uh, usually uh, I've taken the time by now to look at all the legislation that's submitted. I haven't done so yet uh, at this point, but obviously. You know, there, there are certain pieces of legislation that every now and then will affect the municipalities. I think the biggest thing that uh, we've been concerned about over the years is making sure that there's no downshifting of, um, from the state to the local levels of ex expenses that we have to then pick up on the local level. And that's, um, you know, that's something that we'll be keeping a, a keen eye on, um, you know, as, as things happen in Concord because you know, one of the, I think it's 
important um, it going through the budget process I think it's important to educate the public as best we can for you know where all the expenses are what's driving certain expenses from year to year health care mm -hmm. it's the number one thing right now right. I mean it's the biggest driver people think you know salaries it's actually it's the health care benefits right. that are going every year is going through the roof higher mm -hmm. and higher and and, it's, and a lot of it's now because of the changes we've seen in the right. health care law um, but it's something that as a town uh, we're going to need to address in the near future from these costs getting out of control because they, they it's really one of the biggest cost drivers but there's other things too that affect you know what the town has to pay for year in year out and the other side too is um, you know looking at uh, I think it's important for the citizens to see where do we get our revenue from that it's not just from the taxpayers the residential taxpayers right. but how much comes in in commercial revenue and uh, in industry and uh, how much that means to a town and making sure you're you're keeping your your tax rate low um, the the Granite Ridge uh, power plant uh, they pay a significant amount in, in taxes every year to the town of Londonderry that helps contribute to keeping that tax base uh, lower well, uh, I think, did we talk about this on another show? We had a special session for expansion of Medicaid, and that's right, going to yes. be coming back. Mm -hmm. And um, I listened to Charlie Erlinghouse twice so I could, would retain more of, of, you know, what he was explaining it and what happened in um, Maine and how it didn't help the people that needed it the mm -hmm. most. So you have three tiers of people. You have those that are uninsured for, and some of them are uninsured because they choose to be. They're in their 20s. They're healthy. They really don't feel like they need mm -hmm. um, insurance, health insurance. And then you have... Um, those are on, on Medicaid, or I uh, lost my place here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you have the private insurance, okay? Mm -hmm. So the expansion of Medicaid, what it does, it takes that lower half of people that are currently on private insurance plans and dumps them into Medicaid, okay? And mm -hmm. that does nothing to help those that, that need it the most, that have no, no health insurance. It didn't work in Maine. And if it passes in New Hampshire, it's no, no doubt it's going to lead to a broad-based tax like, like um, sales, tax or, right. sales tax or income tax. So, you know, it, it sounds wonderful and good. Yeah, let's expand and get everybody covered. But what we really should be looking at is how can we insure those that are uninsured rather than messing with the private uh, insurance and mm -hmm. dumping those people into Medicaid? Right. Well, in, in his case here, we were talking on uh, work, you know, insurance there. You, there's some other areas that are going to cost you more down the road. Is like, for instance, you budget a certain amount for overtime. Mm -hmm. Now, in that overtime there, what co comes is a big piece that comes with that. Every time somebody goes in, that goes in towards the retirement. Mm -hmm. So now you budget a certain level now and your overtime keeps going over and over and over the budget, then your retirement costs going up and up mm -hmm. and up. Mm -hmm. And right. of course, we try to fix that at the state house because instead of going to the taxpayers, we made the individuals pay $2 more. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if we don't get a handle on that in the town, yep. that's going to kill us. And mm -hmm. I've been tracking like what's going on in the fire department, yep. police on their radios and all. And I noticed we've been calling in people when there's fires going on in other areas, why aren't we? No, we're looking at that. Meeting? Yeah, we're you know looking at we uh, on the town side tracking all of the different light items in in all of the different mm -hmm. budgets, and uh, it's something that I work regularly with right. the police chief and the fire chief on, and uh, I can tell you that um, you know we're we're doing our best to try to address mm -hmm. those issues to make sure that we're not having overruns. Because mm -hmm. I think uh, there was the a budget. fire last week or something in Derry a few days ago and Lunday was there, so it left us open. Mm -hmm. mm. But normal, other cities and towns would call in other cities and towns and back them up yep. in case. Uh, instead, we're calling in people. For, yeah, because, you know I mean, to right. cover when there's really no reason. When right, we have well, I mean, and you want to, at the same time, you want to make sure that you're, you're using, you're not using mutual aid to subsidize, you know, your department at the same time. If you're always calling in right. mutual aid, rather than using your own staff. But see, we were doing mutual aid for another town. Yeah. That's most of the time, times when they call them in. Right. When we're helping somebody else. Yeah, out. and that, you know, it, there's there's certain uh, mm -hmm. events that call for, right. you know, that to be done. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest thing is, you know, again, working with both the, the chiefs of the two departments to make sure that we're, we're meeting our budgeted goals for right. for what we have in there. And it's it's something that, as I said, it's, it's addressed on a weekly basis, oh, and good. we're working at. Because I see that budget there that you figure out yep. getting changed on the retirement cost there because of all the overtime going on that you didn't budget for that's above and beyond. Mm -hmm. so, yep. 
I had another piece of legislation there. You know, of course, being the chairman of the um, the Elders Affairs Committee, yeah. I, I see a lot of issues that go on in town with elderly. Yeah. Mm. And one of them is on abuse. Oh, yes. And I'm, I, some I've crossed yeah. lines with Catherine Rogers, who she'll tell me to my face, she's a liberal and I'm a right-wing nut. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we work hand in hand on a piece of legislation relative to neglect of elderly, disabled, or impaired adults, and relative of financial exploitation. And what we're trying to do is protect the elderly being used and abused by a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. This, and being on that committee has opened my eyes up right. on what goes on with the elderly. Yeah, it's, um, and, and I'm, I'm, I think it's great that you're sponsoring legislation to protect elderly from, from abuse occurring. Anything that we can do to do that is, you know, sh should obviously be done. I think we have a great and vibrant senior community oh, in yeah, Londonderry. Awesome. Right. Uh, Kathy Blash, who's our senior affairs director, came on almost the same time that I came on, has really been doing a nice job uh, with the programming up right. at the senior center and has worked well with the different groups up there. And um, we've tried to be very responsive. I, I hear from you regularly and from Joe Green as well, right. Councillor Green, uh, you know, about how can we better meet the needs of the, the seniors in our community. Um, one of the things you did ask recently was, is how can the seniors find out information about getting the tax exemption, right. the, the mm -hmm. uh, senior tax exemption? They can go on to the website if they go on to the tax right. assessors. Um, mm -hmm. area on the website you can find the information out there but obviously if they don't have access to a computer one of the things we are going to do right. is uh, have a program for them at did, the senior center did Joe bring up about not only did we because you already have it on the assessors page mm -hmm. we wanted those same documents the tax exemption for the veterans for the disabled for the yeah. elderly mm -hmm. and we've got all those over yeah. into the uh, not just moved but copied into the senior uh, the seniors page sure you know, so that yep. way, if somebody looks up for the seniors, they see the they same see thing that. Yeah. without going into the assessors. Sure. I had a comment about you being a right wing nut. Mm -hmm. You know, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. I'd rather be a right wing nut because it keeps things nice and tight. And whatever right. as a left wing nut is really a loose screw. Yes. There you go. Well, have you seen all the news going on nationally on how they're attacking Marilyn de Garcia? Oh, jeez. And did you, then they said that she is Al Baldassar with <laughs> stiletto heels. I'm sure, Al, I, I'm <laughs> sure you took that as a compliment, right? <laughs> we, we've been actually trying to find him in Paris. Because, well, that you know, I actually him. recruited Marilyn to be one of the tri chairs of the House Republican Alliance. That I've been on for the last seven years, which I am now yeah. a tri chair. And uh, she's a good conservative, a go getter. Mm -hmm. But to attack her personally, I mean, come after us for the issues. Let's mm -hmm. let's debate the issues. Mm -hmm. But to go, I mean, it's like you. Somebody I bet, I bet she knows that Benghazi's in the Middle East. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, look, the personal attacks in politics, mm -hmm. regardless of what side is coming from, is never called for. And it's, uh, I think, it's what turns people off to the political system. Uh, one of the things that I said very early on when I was first hired into this position is uh, someone, I think I was on close up on Channel 9 and Josh McKelvin said to me, he says, so something to the extent of, or, or is James Pindle, you know, what do you think of the job Maggie Hassan's doing? And I said, James, I said, one of the nice things about being town manager now is I am in a nonpartisan position. Right, yes. I said, I'll let right. you guys do mm -hmm. all the, the political punditry right. and and, and, you know, fighting the battles, I said, I, I am I'm committed to all of the residents of the town of Londonderry. I don't care what party mm -hmm. uh, they're affiliated with. And, um, you know, it's, and it's something that I've, I've tried to hold true to since being in this position that, you know, the town manager is a town manager for everyone. That's right. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a non, you, it's a non-political right. position and just trying to make the town the best it can be. Well, Londonderry is lucky to have you, and I'm sure the rest of the towns are going to be jealous. Oh, without a no, doubt. I appreciate but that. But you know the oh. nice thing about it is, Kevin, with the message has to get out there. If somebody has an issue yeah. uh, and they're hearing stuff that's questionable, they should call you, your office. Absolutely. You'll, you'll give them the straight scoop Absolutely. and help them out. Yeah. I've, you know, I've got an open door policy and, uh, you know, anyone that wants to come up and see me so long as I'm not in a meeting, I'm more than happy to see them. They're more than happy to call me directly as well. And, uh, you know, I, I then that is important, Al, because as you know, the, the rumor mill can often be rampant. And right. uh, if they want a straight answer, mm -hmm. they can give me a call to find out anything they want to find out about. I'm going to start a rumor. I, mm -hmm. I think he looks a little like Clint Black. What do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trust but verify. Go right to the source. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, I've read a couple books I wanted to show you before we run out of time. Um, you know on the front steps of the State House there's mm -hmm. that big tall man, six foot. He's six seven. 
is Pastor Garrett Lear. Well, he has a book out called uh, America's Dynamic Duo, Morality and Freedom, and it's um, in conjunction with this other wonderful, wonderful pastor that I, I met this weekend, uh, Pastor Steve Kraft. He's from um, New Jersey, and uh, he, what a dynamic speaker. Well, both of them, but um, Pastor Kraft, he's, he said, if you've never heard a black preacher, you need to. And, and he said that nobody falls asleep in Reverend Kraft's church. And boy, he, <laughs> that is so true. But he, I just wanted to point this book out to you. It, I missed really that lunch. That was at the luncheon you, you went to, right? Well, no, or that was, was another one. That's oh, this okay. book. That's Personhood. And this is mm -hmm. um, Daniel Becker. He ran for Congress in Georgia. And he lost. And you may remember this. It was during a football game, and he paid to have a 30-second ad to show what an abortion is because he said, how can people be for it or against it if they don't know what it is? So he had this commercial that showed an abortion. And then that night, his phone rang off the hook, one hate call after the other, threatening bodily harm. And you went, how dare you do this? How dare you show this to my children? And, you know, it would just seemed like he was at the end of his rope, but it, reading the book is very interesting. Um, Georgia today is one of the most pro-life states in the nation. Wow. And it started out well, being the I, least. You see what I wear, right? Yes, I mm -hmm. don't have pins on, but I have my little right. feet too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, I, and I just, those are little twin babies and I don't no, know. That, that's awesome. Well, you I know, it's a sad case here about that accident that just happened here mm -hmm. in the Rose of New York. Yes, Hampshire, oh, and that, that's another, they, I know you're not in politics. Right, you're yeah, not, but I mean, it's something that Griffin's affects law. us here. We need to talk about Griffin's I law. I co-sponsored that I'm with... I'm co-sponsoring uh, Leon Rideout. Leon he law, his grandchild was killed it's in a, a car accident. It's a protection act. Uh, yep. It has nothing to do with abortions or anything. Mm -mm. It has to do with if you're killed and somebody kills you and you're pregnant, and you, mm -hmm. it should be a double homicide, mm -hmm. not just one. So, so hopefully his, that's going to come... Died um, before he was born in a mm -hmm. in a car accident like right. that. So Griffin's so, law. All right. So Kevin, so is there anything that you want to add? I mean, uh, do you want people kicking your door and come say, <laughs> "Hey, Kevin, uh, I got this issue, that issue," and yeah, no. Mm -hmm. I uh, again, it's uh, people are more than uh, if they want to contact me via email. My email address is ksmith at londonderrynh dot org. Mm -hmm. They can email me. As I said, they can call town hall four three two one one zero zero. Uh, or just uh, stop in and, and see me up on the second floor. Um, you know, I want to be as accessible as possible uh, to everyone. And, um, and you know, I, I guess the only thing else I would add is uh, just saying thank you um, to the citizens uh, of, of Londonderry. They've been great to work with, and, um, you know, they've, they've welcomed me back, I guess you could say, with, with open arms. And, um, it's it's been it's been a great pleasure, as I said, to to be doing this position. I, I'd rather be nowhere else right now. Well, I'm, I'm glad that he's uh, basically said earlier there, and it keeps sticking in my mind. He said that he's keeping the tax flat, okay, because that means if he goes takes any more money out of your pocket, the quality of life goes away for certain people. So what I'm glad mm -hmm. I'm gonna use that word stable. Mm -hmm. You know, to maintain a stable mm -hmm. tax. That's all people ask for. Mm -hmm. So they can plan. And I think, you're, you know, you're definitely the right guy for the job. I just hope you'll rub off on the school side that they can do more with less, you know, in uh, the education like they've done for many, many years. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, as I said, it's the school is an entirely separate entity right. than it is from the town. And um, they're going through their deliberations right now as well with their budget and uh, but, um, you know, make sure I would say people ought to check the website so they see when the public hearings are. We've mm -hmm. got a public hearing coming up on the budget uh, December 23rd. I know it's two days before Christmas, right. but it's how all these dates fall with the, the new SB2 system you know it's that we have. Dead budget. I mean, people aren't going to show. Yeah, it's well, you know, few. but it's, uh, and right. the thing is, is mm -hmm. that so many people show up for presidential elections, they mm -hmm. show up for the primary elections, but the thing <coughs> that's really affecting their taxes most, mm -hmm. which are the right. local elections, they don't, mm -hmm. they don't, they don't right. show up for right. it. We have that so, too. you know, I, I can't do enough to encourage people to show up, even if they don't want to say anything, just follow the process, get involved with it, and it's, it's your government. You have a say in it, you have a voice in it. Um, you know, show up to the meetings and let uh, us have it if you want it. I agree. Yeah. Well, what do you think? I did, for our second show, uh, we've uh, done pretty good. There, a little conversation, 
We'll have to start figuring out who we want for our next show. Right, and I, I need to remember that the name of the show now is Who's Looking Out For You. Well, you know, <laughs> Janine and I, for a long time now, have been dealing with, or chatting with Janine. And we still have that, she still has I that remember show. chatting with Janine. Right. Yeah. I did chat so, with Janine a few times. she's done some great stuff working on uh, veterans, on interviewing or World War II vets and everything. I mean, I have to compliment her. The work that she's done has been above and beyond. That's why I enjoy sitting uh, next to Janine and, and chatting with other people mm -hmm. there and trying to get right to the, the source and the point, uh, you know, what's going on. Well, you can come back anytime. Well, thank you. So. Uh, I'll be happy to come back mm -hmm. and update folks as, it, as things happen. So. Thank, thanks for being yeah. on the show. Thank yeah, you thank again, you. Al. Thanks for having Kevin. me on. My pleasure. We know where to find thanks you. You do. Jeannie, it's always a pleasure here, and I just want to make sure that they all understand that who's looking out for you, and that's what this show is about. And we're going to bring you the real truth and the facts. Thank you. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.